Welcome to Worship with Historic Franklin Presbyterian Church. We are going to be exclusively doing worship online for the next few weeks. We do hope to see you here, and if you can, go ahead and upload your comments uh, on the live stream, or you can send them to our Facebook page. We'd love to hear from you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would you join me in the call to worship? Look, your king is coming, humble and riding on a donkey. Hosanna to the son of David. Lay your cloaks before him, spread palms to honor him. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Raise your voices, lift your hearts, rejoice, our Savior comes. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, on this Palm Sunday as we begin Holy Week and the walk to the cross and then finally to the tomb, the empty tomb, we rejoice today for you are with us and we give you thanks for that. We pray, O oh God, that wherever we are worshiping and whenever we are worshiping, that our worship would be pleasing in your sight. In Christ we pray. Amen. Please join in singing Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, hymn number 197. Welcome back. Now that we have sung our first hymn of singing hosannas as they did in the streets, it is important for us to remember as children of God that we fall short and we make mistakes all of the time. So let us join together in the prayer of confession that is printed in your bulletin. If you don't have it in front of you, would you just pray with us? Suffering God. The way of the cross is a hard road. It's draining, it's demanding, it's fraught with danger. You ask us to stay by your side as you walk toward Calvary, but weariness and fear overtake us. Like the first disciples, we are quick to betray you, to deny you, to abandon you. Forgive us, God, and strengthen us for the journey ahead. Give us courage to face the pain and suffering of this world and respond with compassion. As the darkness gathers, renew our faith, 
fill us with hope, and startle us with your grace. In Christ we pray. Amen. My friends, who really is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ came for us. Christ died for us. He reigns in power for us and he prays for us. All who are in Christ are new creations. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So know that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now for our first scripture reading from the Psalms, Psalm 118, the first two verses, and then verses 19 through 29. Please listen for God's word to you this morning. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, the first 11 verses. Again, listen for God's word to you. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, as you have gathered us here, I believe you want something for us as well as something of us. So give us ears to hear you, eyes to see how you're already at work in our lives and hearts and lives that are ready and willing to be changed by the winds of your spirit. Amen. N. T. Wright, a New Testament professor at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, wrote an article for Time magazine this past week. The article begins, 
For many Christians, the coronavirus-induced limitations on life have arrived at the same time as Lent, the traditional season of doing without. But the sharp new regulations, no theater, school shutting, virtual house arrest, make a mockery of our little Lenten disciplines. Doing without whiskey or chocolate is child's play, compared with not seeing friends or grandchildren, or going to the pub, the library, or church. There's a reason we normally try to meet in the flesh. There's a reason solitary confinement is such a severe punishment. And this Lent has no fixed Easter to look forward to. We can't tick off the days. This is a stillness, not of rest, but of poised, anxious sorrow. It is as if We've been in the midst of Holy Week for the entirety of Lent, as if we jumped from Ash Wednesday to Good Friday and are stuck there somehow. And now, because the calendar says it's Palm Sunday, we're reeling ourselves back to a parade of sorts with shouts of Hosanna from our lips. It's all a bit confusing, a, a bit muddled, even false, at least for me. Routine is what keeps me going. I don't know about you, but someone I spoke with this past week echoed the same sentiment. This is what I do Mondays, this is what I do Tuesdays, but now everything's backwards and upside down. I used to go to work, but now I'm home, and so is my husband, and my kids are back home. I'm not a short order cook, nor am I a secretary. Yet that seems to be the assumption at my house right now. It is the Psalms of Lament that N.T. Wright speaks about which speak most candidly into our lives right now, I believe. Psalm 80 asks over and over, Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we might be saved. You know, we didn't realize that routine was so wonderful. We didn't know that the person in the next cubicle was someone we would really miss as we work from home. We didn't realize what a gift it was to have folks over for dinner or to be able to go see a movie, or watch March Madness. And yet, I am mindful that as I work from home, I still have a job, and I have a home from which to work. I'm mindful that as I share my workspace with my husband, I do so safely, knowing our relationship is grounded in love and not power or fear. I'm mindful that my cupboards are not bare and that I have the capacity and means to get to a store and purchase what I need. Likewise, I have the means to connect to others via my phone and my laptop. In short, I am privileged even in the midst of our safer at home status. Now, I'm not trying to shame you if you're feeling depressed about how things are and the void we're all living in, but it is all relative. Things could be a whole lot worse, and they are for so many, even those who are right here in Franklin. There are still so many whose lives are filled with difficulty and pain and grief and if we're not those, then as believers, we are called to stand with those. And it is here in this place where the biblical tradition of lament is real and helpful and meaningful. Again, as Wright pens, lament is what happens when people ask why and don't get an answer. It's where we go, get to when we move beyond our self-centered worry about our sins and failings and look more broadly at the suffering of the world. It's bad enough facing a pandemic in New York City or London. But what about a crowded refugee camp on a Greek island? What about Gaza or South Sudan? I think that's one reason why I believe making a trip to a country far away is so good for all of us. Our insulated walls get opened up a bit when we see firsthand how others live. And now we're all worldwide 
asking the same question. How long, O oh Lord? How long? And we just don't know. We're told 30 more days and then we'll see. 30 more days? And then what? Where is the good news? Our text tells us the good news enters Jerusalem this day. Riding on the back of a donkey, to the cheers of crowds and the waving of palm branches, Jesus, the one who has walked our earth and knows what it is to suffer and languish and laugh and love. Yet I can't help but think of what must have been on his heart in the middle of the chaos and joy, the knowing of what could very well lay ahead of him, especially given this grand entry into the heart of the lion's den, so to speak. How long, O oh Lord, how long does he have? We don't have good answers for much. Except we know how Jesus' story ends, or rather continues to this day. We cling to this in the midst of the fear and anxiety around us, turning once again to God's word to sustain and even speak into and for our lives when we can't ourselves. It is, as Wright concludes, no part of the Christian vocation then to be able to explain what's happening and why. In fact, it is part of the Christian vocation not to be able to explain and to lament instead. As the Spirit laments within us, so we become, even in our self-isolation, small shrines where the presence and healing love of God can dwell. And out of that, there can emerge new possibilities, new acts of kindness, new scientific understanding, new hope, new wisdom for our leaders. Now there's a thought. So how is the presence of God dwelling within you, healing you? Where are the new possibilities right where you are, which can bring light and sustenance to others, or even to yourself and your family? In a conversation this week with a colleague on a Zoom call, she mentioned her conversation with someone else who reminded her, this will not break the church. We cannot break the church. Rather, during this time, let's give ourselves room for trying new things, for creativity, for joyful hearts, and see what comes of it. We can't break the church. Well, I believe the church is being reformed yet again into something different than it was to fit a future which is yet to be. We can't break the church. This won't break the church. Good news. Even if life is quite different from what we expected or what we desire, the presence of God is still here among us, with us, as God was with Christ as he rode into Jerusalem to show the world what real love looks like. So, if you feel the need, Go ahead and lament, shout your anger. God can take it, nor will God turn away from you. Rather, God will remain steadfast, abounding in mercy and love. God will remain. That is good news for us today. And good news for us today is good news for the kingdom of God and always a reason to proclaim Thanks be to God. Amen. So let us turn our hearts and thoughts toward prayer. Asking God's presence to continue to abide with us. To hear the words even we cannot utter. Let us pray. 
Holy and gracious God, we again give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to gather in new ways, for opportunities to be surprised, for hope to blossom, for new ideas and time for them to percolate. We give you thanks, O oh God, this day for healing that is taking the in the body of Diane Davis. We give you thanks for that, for your presence with Jim Jenkins and Jamie Drusey's um, niece. We give you thanks, O oh God, for healing in so many ways and shapes and forms, and for this time for us to think and ponder, to wonder and dream, figure out new ways of being. This is a time like no one other, and we give you thanks as we begin this Holy Week. Help us in the midst of this Holy Week to read your word and be surprised yet again, allowing your word to speak to us to show us something new. We pray, O oh God, certainly for those in South Sudan and Gaza and so many other places for which living is a struggle on even the best day. We pray for those even in our own communities who are hungry, who thirst for safety, Holy God, show us how we can live more graciously and hospitably in sharing what we have with others. Gracious God, be your good news within us so that as we encounter people, our loved ones, and even people on the street who don't know us, that your good news may shine forth. We give you thanks for this day and all of your gifts, especially for your son, and it's in his name we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Let us sing.
As we close our worship service, uh, one reminder for you, if you do end up going by the church, a sign will be posted by the city of Franklin because we're asking their permission regarding the columbarium. Uh, so they're posting a sign. You don't need to worry about it. They'll remove the sign when they're done. So I just wanted to let you know that. Would you join me in the charge and benediction? Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to join us on Maundy Thursday at 7 p.m. and also Good Friday at noon for our Holy Week worship services. And then next Sunday, right here yet again, as we celebrate Easter. May God bless and keep you. Bye-bye.